Hey you guys, this is Raphael from ShilohRelics.com. Hope you're doing well. We're having a good day down here. I'm just thankful to get to be with you guys again. Today we're gonna to talk about something that most people don't even realize was available during the Civil War, much less before then. It's the use of a rocket as a weapon. I know it's crazy, right? 200 years ago, actually over 200 years ago, there was this cat in England. Uh, Sir William Congrave, and he decided that he was going to develop a very functional, and he did, a very functional rocket. And it looked basically like a um, bottle rocket of today. It had a stick on the end of it, and it would shoot, but it wasn't very efficient as far as the direction and they used them, but they weren't truly effective. Then this guy from England, evidently England, English people like rockets. Who knew? Uh, I thought it was Germans and people from Huntsville, Alabama, but I digress. There was this cat named William Hale, H-A-L-E, and he decides he's going to uh, make his own version of a rocket, and he did a heck of a job. What he did even got him a patent in 1844, and in 2004, he was actually inducted into the International Space Hall of Fame because of his design of a rotary rocket. And what it did, it got rid of that stick off the end of it, and it used a design that had holes in the base of the piece to propel it and keep it straight. They had uh, several holes on the bottom of them to start with, and in 1855, he realized that three was the magic number. And as you can see, this one has three on the base, and it also was designed with the curve on the piece outside of those uh, holes to help it spin, give it better direction, and they also say that the noise that these things made disturbed the cavalry uh, on their horses tremendously. So what we have here is, a, uh, is an original Hale rocket, H-A-L-E rocket. And they went into service. Remember, he got the patent in 1844. The US government said, hey, these things could really affect the war. During the Mexican War, the first time they were used in heavy service was the Battle of Veracruz in 1847. And they fired hundreds of these in there on a siege on the city. And if you've heard the word siege, you might not know what it means. What that means is you've got a town or a place that you want to surrender. They won't do it. So what do you do? You just bombard them and bombard them and bombard them. Try to say that three times in a row. That doesn't come out too easy. Then they finally give up and surrender. So we know what a siege is. We know what a hail rocket is. Now let's get the hail into the war. The Civil War, uh, actually, actually let's back up that much. At the end of the Mexican War, they decide they don't need these anymore. So they disband the rocket service. But when the Civil War breaks out, both sides are like, well, that could be useful, so let's try it. So Beauregard tries some, then the Union tries some. There's been, there has been some excavated in the Seven Pines, Virginia area, uh, and several other places. They say some of them were actually found in Chattanooga, too. The uh, government over this time frame between the Mexican War and the end of the Civil War they believed in it enough that they paid Hale $25,000 in that time frame money for the use of his design. So they had some faith in it. As for the piece itself, it has on that end, as you can see, it has the nose of the rocket, which looks kind of odd, I know, but they, <laughs> that's where the actual projectile itself was. The body of the piece is actually uh, rolled, and you can see on this where it's joined together, and that's what held the material that caused the combustion to make it fire. And then they also have the bottom section, 
as you see here, with the uh, tail, and you can see the curve in it that caused it to spin. So, you don't see these very often. They actually fired out of a very, very simple piece. And this is a picture of what it fired out of. Uh, my friends up at Julia and now Morphe Auction sold this one several years ago. I didn't have the money to buy it at the time and I've kicked myself ever since, ever since that I missed it. But it's basically a tube and it fired it. It had a tripod kind of uh, base to it. Very, very simple, which is probably one of the reasons that they wanted it to work. It's a heck of a lot easier to move this than it was to move a cannon. So, these are tough to find. I've only had a handful of them over the years. They're most of the time completely in pieces. This one has had some restoration. Uh, it would still bring multiple thousands of dollars. A friend of mine let me, I sold it to him several years ago and he let me borrow it for this uh, segment because I thought this is cool. Somebody needs to know about this. And as with everything else that we have on here, every relic has a story and I just feel fortunate that I get to share these stories with you. I appreciate each one of you that watch these. I love you guys. I want my family to know that I love them. I hope that they always remember me telling them that. I hope that when you get the chance, you're always kind because a simple act of kindness can change somebody's day, if not their life. And I love you guys and I'll catch you next time.